I don't want to blast everybody out. It's kind of different with the acoustics and a little bit of a raspy voice this morning. But everybody hear me all right? I'm sure once the tigers start getting rocking and rolling here, sometimes they make a little bit of noise. It's, uh, it gets kind of interesting. I want to welcome everyone out to the Navy here, the Black Tiger Discovery. This is a lot of fun. We definitely enjoy doing this, especially when we have such a wonderful host, such as the Navy Pier hosts. They're very, very committed to conservation, whether it's the ecosystem, which what they reside on here, land mammals, or even the aquatic mammals. It's extremely important to them. Which kind of brings us to this part of education program, the Royal White Tigers. Now, when you first walk into the exhibit, you definitely uh, kind of get a little bit of a surprise, don't you? You realize that you're looking at big footy cats. They're rather large, without a doubt. But what makes these guys a little bit more special is, obviously, the coloration. These are the Royal White Tigers. Now they have a tremendous history to show you a little bit about. While these guys are kind of being a little bit on the lax side, this probably be a good opportunity to introduce them to you here. Obviously there's two of them here, and we have the mother and the son, and if you'll take a look, the size difference is rather interesting on the actual son. Now this is the mom down here. This is a 12-year-old, and her name is Gita, and it's spelled G-I-T-A. It actually is an Asian name, and it has a meaning of a gift from an angel. Problem with Gita is she knows this. She will utilize that. And of course, Cosmo likes tearing up plants. You're going to realize why we call him Cosmo. We really do. Now, Gita, being an actual Asian name, she definitely enjoys being the mother that she is. Now, she's a four time mother over the last 12 years. This particular son that you saw over here playing with the plants, his name, as I was saying, is Cosmo. We spell it a little bit different to give him something a little unique K O Z M O. Now, Cosmo is given that name from his namesake because he is like a Cosmo or a Cosmonaut to be on the, the other side at that point. He is always in trouble with his mother. He is constantly into anything and everything, as you just saw a demonstration there. He thinks that everything is about him. Of course, I know a lot of teenagers that are that way. And I probably was at that age as well, too. Cosmo definitely enjoys the people, as you see. He really enjoys showing off. Notice how Gita also, his mother, decided, well, if you're going to tear the plants up, I'm coming over there as well. Now, Gita raised Cosmo completely. Cosmo has never had a bottle of one. He has never had any interference from the keepers except in basic handling and basic medical needs and techniques and things of that nature there. So Gita has done all the raising. Now, Cosmo is only 11 months old. He won't turn one year. I'm going to hurt you this now. I, he will turn actually one year on the 24th of this month. He will celebrate his first birthday here at Navy Pier. And so here, he got a little bit, as you can see, like I said, he's always in trouble with his mom. He's a little bit more bulkier than she is. Now, one thing about tigers is their weight structure changes when they become more of an actual adult. The actual tiger frame and the bone of an adult gets heavier and stronger as it grows older. This is what creates most of its weight factor with its frame versus some of his baby fat. You can see some of his hair. His hair isn't near to sleek and, for lack of a better word, in order as much as he is. She's an adult, being a female, she's very fastidious. For Cosmo, he's still got some of that baby. We typically, when you see white tigers born, they're about 3.1, 3. or actually 2.1, 2.3 pounds when they're born. He gave us the two twins, and they weighed at right about three and a half pounds a piece. So we knew, wow, that's going to be big. And as you see, once if you've been here before, we started actually talking. As soon as Gita hears us talking about her and her son, she immediately starts getting a little bit active. Have you guys seen as she's running back and forth? She almost floats, doesn't she? These guys are very, very, very agile, extremely athletic, without a doubt. And mainly because of that is the amount of power that these guys have and they get that power from the food that they consume. Now, actual tigers, they're considered hyper carnivores. We get the word hyper, we know that means pretty radical and busy all the time. Carnivore meaning it eats nothing but meat. One thing about the tigers, they have to have all raw meat. They don't want anything cooked at all. They think cooked food is absolutely icky and it has nothing that their actual system needs. I'll give you an example, and she's gonna play with her son. Now, and what you're seeing is Tiger Mom in action. This is truly the way that it is. She's playing, trying to get him to do things, and then she'll, he'll probably try to get her to do things. Every now and then you're gonna hear him growl in what we call as keepers, barking at each other. If it gets loud, remember, it's supposed to be that way. A tiger roar and a tiger growl is designed to do one thing. It gets your attention and intimidates you, and it works very, very quickly, it does. And that's what she's doing right now. The only thing Gita doesn't like is whenever she's done playing, it's supposed to be playtime over. Cosmo says, no, not really, and she will bite him on the butt. 
and heater activity here momentarily, and you're probably going to see them barking each other. This is absolutely normal, and we actually encourage this to happen. Makes it a little bit interesting when we go in there with them. Now, as tigers, these guys are what we call a hot tiger. There's your first zoo slang term. Alter the animal in any way to create that. As I was telling you, a little bit of barking, and you're going to see that. And this is actual play. It really is. Sometimes you can see, that's my, my tire, and they actually enjoy that tire together. And he's stirring it up once again. He really is. Now, the raw meat that they actually eat, he even normally eats about 20 to 25 pounds of raw meat each. Relaxing is burning up about 15,000 calories per day. That's 15,000 calories. Translated, that's the average of about 400 hamburgers per day. The equivalent of the energy going out of her is tremendous. So it just gives you a little bit of an idea of just how awesome the biologies and the biomechanics behind that particular animal is to take raw meat and convert it into the hypercarnivore into the super predator that they actually are. Now, the white tiger's got a really unique history behind it. Unfortunately, they're extinct in the wild. They're gone. They've been gone since 1958. A little bit older as well. The white tiger is extremely rare. Now, it's not an albino. Many people think, wow, you know, it's white. It's a different color. It's an albino. Or it's a Siberian tiger. Both of those are actually incorrect. The white tiger is the Bengal tiger species. The exact same tiger. It's just a color variation. And what creates that white coat is a very unique gift that Mother Nature gave it. It's something that's called a double recessive gene strain. Now, what the story was, the Maharaja immediately said, you know, search the area and find out what's going on because it was his land as well. Well, guess what they found? And you're going to hear these guys play. They're going to be nice and fun. They actually found three baby tigers. The mother evidently knew that her lair had been discovered and the fight was going to happen, and she took the fight away from the babies. This saved the baby's life. Now, two of the tigers were regular black and orange, heterotigerous tigers. That's what we call regular black and orange. One of them was white. The Maharaja immediately said, they're not going to survive here. Take them to the palace grounds. And they did. This is the first white tiger that man ever had. He named this white tiger Mohan. The white tiger is very, very high in the Indian culture and in the Hindu culture. It, without a doubt, it is. Now, Mohan lived to the ripe old age of 20 years old. And for a wild tiger, that is tremendous. Now, they thought the white tiger was already extinct, so what did they do? They... Now, what we're going to see here is Quentin comes down. I tell you what, we'll start her down in here. And you can see she knows what that is. Pork loin is one of her favorites. And you'll notice that Quentin, he's one of the assistant handlers, he probably won't have to give her any command. She won't know what to do. He'll have her on the box, he'll have her stand up, and she is doing that automatically. This is what we call positive reinforcement. What this means is that we are seeing a behavior that the tiger really likes to do. We desire that behavior, so all we do is just encourage it. And she does it so willingly and has a good time with it. Now, here's the unique part, because you're actually going to be seeing some training in progress. Cosmo is just now learning how this works. He's going to bring her down here to do that. And Cosmo is just now learning how this works. But he also has got to learn the good old number one rule. Always take your turn. If he doesn't take his turn and he tries to cut mom out of his back, guess what? We're going to hear about it. We're going to hear about it really loud. We certainly will. She likes pork loin. She really does. Pork, turkey, any kind of poultry is one of their favorites. They do like raw and actual, of course, you know, the red meat, you would think, wow, I just gotta have red meat all the time. You know, in the wild, that's true, but in today's culture, and with as much as red meat is processed today, it has a lot of vitamin A on it. And he's gonna bring her down here in just a minute. Now, vitamin A is really good for you and I. Tigers don't tolerate vitamin A too well, so our nutritionists will regulate it and let them in. Let's see what happens. We're gonna do a little bit of training. Cosmo. Cosmo. Cosmo's learning a little bit about how this works, but again, he has to learn that he has to yeah, he's learning. There you go, boy. He's only got 11 months old. Ah, wait, he's huge. He's gigantic. He really is. See if we can bring him down here in this area. There we go. There. And you look at that quarter of his eye. And this is really unique. You're seeing something? That's just really high. Yeah, that's bar number one. That's warning number one. That's normal. And you're seeing something that's really unique. This is your first time that we're letting them actually eat together simultaneously and learn how to do this. Because the actual part about training and working with these magnificent animals is being able to let them work it out themselves. We obviously don't want to create any type of combat between the two by any means whatsoever. You got a couple about, uh, y'all want to see how they eat bones? Here, crunchy bones. Why don't you give me a 
Drumstick. Carnivore. These guys have got a huge, huge range on them. When they use, and you'll notice that she'll take that food and she will put it in the back jaws. She's using a section of teeth called the carnassials. And I don't want to let him have one just yet. Bring her down here, see if she'll come down here on this one and some more out. She's actually crushing about 3,600 pounds per square inch. Now, human flesh punctures at only five pounds of pressure. Human bone will break in half at 80 pounds of pressure. So imagine that. You want to learn breaking that pressure compared to the 3,600 pounds per square inch. They can dismantle really fast. Have you ever had a really cool pair of scissors that won't move? They're really tight. They're very sharp. You know how much stronger they are than regular old paper mistake scissors. Things like that. Same thing with the tiger dog. Our jaws move back and forth, so we don't really. That's cool. That's cool. That there's turns that hey, you won't slap me on the side of little old dog. And you, women don't want to do that when their kids are home, but with tigers, this is what tigers do. There's no better discipline than a mother tiger doing it to her own tiger. She knows that. Now, what you're also going to see is we're going to walk in there with them while they're actually eating. This is the unique part. Let her go down and have one more, then you think an Eskimo pork roll. Do they eat venison first? Oh, do they? Good question. Do they eat venison first? Yes, they actually do. In fact, it is a huge source of calcium for them to have that. It's wonderful. We wish we had it more in a zoological setting. Unfortunately, it's so messy, and of course, the parasitic control just goes off the charts, so we have to make compensation for that. In fact, uh, let's see. Mackenzie, bring us some pork loin. We'll let them, let them both have pork loin. Now, you see how she actually snaps that? One thing about eating is she will sit there and bark and let her son know that it's a no-no to get around her while she's actually eating. She understands with her handlers that she doesn't have to worry about that. We're not a competing threat to her by any means. However, she can have a bad hair day, and she'll let you know if she's going to let you get around there and do those particular things. You see, it's actually in here. This is a piece of fiberglass sticks. All this is more of a back scratcher than anything. If anything were to get to her and I don't want her to have it, I can pull it out from her. I'd much rather get upset if this and snap a piece of fiberglass than actually snap me, which she will do. She can do at times. And the unique thing about what you're actually seeing here is every single one of you can do this exact same thing. Every single one of you. It just takes one important component. Time. Give the animal time. Never force an animal to do something that it doesn't want to do, and never force an animal to do something by force. Truly, you don't need to do that. And when you act that way, you get the response right back to these guys here. And this is what you see. Bring her over here. Let's see. Let her. Did, did you get to do more down there? I think those folks wanted some pictures. I don't know why they're doing it. Cosmo's learning what pork loin is all about. He pretty well got to it to a certain degree. Hey, you want that? I guess so. He's like, hey. That was pretty good. Do I get that all the time? You should notice that he actually likes that. And if you see when she stands up, you see how quick and how much she floats up into that arena. She really likes that. She will stand up directly into that area there. Now again, talking about the conservation of the white tiger, you know, we talk about that it's going to be going back to the wild. We're going to see some successes and we're going to see some failures with it. But it's now time for that to actually happen with the tiger being reintroduced back into the wild. Now, the reason the tiger has such a hard time surviving is because it is just to be able to substantiate itself. You like a baby now, baby. Just to be able to substantiate itself, the Cosmo gets fully grown, he would need close to about 70 to 80 actual square kilometers to survive it. That doesn't mean that he likes to run and jump and hop and skip and smell flowers. 70 to 80 deer per year. That's just one tiger. Can you imagine that? Doesn't include all the other stuff he's going to be eating together simultaneously, and they're not worried about what you guys are doing or anything of that nature there. Outstanding respect for the animals. I'm going to get the rest of this wonderful chicken and poultry and everything else off of me so I don't smell like a drumstick. In the meantime, Quentin and Mackenzie are both going to be feeding these guys here. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. No such thing as a dumb question. The only dumb question is the one that is never asked. It truly is. You guys get some more pictures. I'll get them cleaned up. I'll be back out. If I can answer any more questions, you guys will join. Give yourself a round of applause, seriously, because the cats have really, really responded well to you. And without that, we got nervous cats in here, and that makes it a little bit of a problem for us. And we're not able to actually work with them, or they're not able to eat. And that's all because of you guys. Did you guys enjoy them? I'm going to get all the cat hair and the wonderful pork off of me. We'll be right back. Yeah. Got many pork.